I am the Nature Hacker, and this is your world. Today I want to talk about gravity, and what gravity is. Gravity has been a mystery for a long time. Um, people are proposing that there's gravitons that are, I don't know, some type of particle that is linking bodies together to form gravity, which is just crazy because there's no particle that can transfer a force, you know, just randomly between two things. So, um, transfer force back, you know, pulling things together. I mean, you can have particles that push things apart, but you can't have particles that pull things together. That doesn't make any sense at all. So, um, the question still remains, what is gravity? So, um, well, I mean, a good thing to look at would be Newton's equation of gravity, which is that force equals, so you, let's say you have two bodies right here, right? And the force between them, according to Newton's gravity, which I am going to say is false in a bit, but I mean, it's definitely good to look at, because um, Newton's gravity, it's an empirical formula, which means that it was formulated based on, you know, observation and experience so there's definitely value to it I mean I, th I I'm gonna propose that Newton's law of gravity is a special case scenario a special case of only stuff on earth okay all right but anyway so Newton's uh, law of gravity says that okay the two masses so this mass times this mass divided by their distance is how much force there is, how much gravitational force. So it's one mass times another mass divided by the distance, okay? So, I mean, if we want to figure out what is creating that relationship, I mean, we should look at other relationships that look just like that. And, well, turns out, ironically enough, when I was debating a flat earther, um, I don't know. He was he was saying that uh, gravity is charge based, um, something like that. So and that sparked in my mind. I mean, obviously he didn't know exactly what what that meant by him saying that it was charge based. I don't think he knew the implications. But what that sparked in my mind was an equation here. You know what? I can actually probably show you these here. So this is this is gravity. Oh gosh, it's so bright. I don't think you can see that. Oh, there we go. So, force is equal to G times M1 times M2 divided by R squared. I mean, that might be backwards, I don't know. Now, that remind when he told me it was charge-based, that reminded me of something called Coulomb's Law. And Coulomb's Law... Trying to get it to focus there. Coulomb's law is force is equal to k, which is another constant like g in the last one. Q1 times Q2 divided by r squared. So that is exactly the same as the gravity equation. I mean, you have const a constant in each one. In the charge equation, it's k, and the gravity equation is g. You have um, terms that represent how much of the stuff is there in charge that's well in the charge law Coulomb's law that is how what the magnitude of the charge is okay, and in gravity's law it's the magnitude of the mass how much total matter is there and they're all divided by uh, distance squared so it's a square, inverse square relationship. So the farther they are apart, the less strong the attraction is going to be. So him saying that it was a charge, and at that point I might have still been a flat earther, so I was kind of interested in it. Him saying that it was a charge, plus me coming, me making the connection with, um, me making the connection with Coulomb's law. I mean, just realizing that Coulomb's law and Newton's gravity law are exactly the same. I mean, the only difference, the only single difference is that Coulomb's law uses the magnitude of the charges multiplied together, while gravity, Newton's gravity, uses the magnitude of the mass. So I was like, okay, well, how do we, 
So what I'm saying here, what I am saying is that gravity is a charge attraction. We are being electrically attracted to the Earth. That is what gravity is. Gravity is electrical attraction. So that's what I'm saying. But then I'm like, okay, well, if I want to say that, that means that I would have to say that mass equals charge. For these two equations to be equivalent, right, they have to be equivalent. I mean, if gravity is a charge, these two equations that I showed you have to be exactly equivalent. It can't be different. Like this one's charge and, and gravity's mass. I mean, if, if charge and mass are different, then I'm wrong. Okay, so charge and mass have to be exactly the same. So, here's the theory I'm proposing to you. Alright, um, what I'm saying here is that mass is an inductor of charge. So, I mean, you're going to have to be an engineer or a physicist to know what an inductor is, but, or, you know, at least an electrician. But um, what an inductor is, is, it's something that can be induced to have an electrical charge. So it's like, you know, a feather or whatever isn't necessarily electrically charged. I mean, it's probably negatively charged, but I mean, that's, that's advanced biology and material sciences. So we're not going to really get into that. But let's just say, you know, feathers is going to be neutral, right? Neutral charge. An inductor would mean that if something else is charged near the feather, the feather will also develop a charge. Okay, now that that is a very, a very, very, very well-known, documented thing in physics. I mean, if you take electricity and magnetism, you will see that induced charges like that are very common. I mean, it's like, I mean, it's, it's one of the most common things. Anyway. So what I'm saying here is that Newton's law, the G constant, the mass times mass, it's only, it only applies to the Earth. G is an Earth constant. And what I'm saying here is that the Earth is electrically charged. The Earth is a dynamo creating an electric charge, and it induces any mass that's above it, you know, like us standing on Earth. We are induced with a charge opposite of the Earth, because the Earth is generating a charge. It's, um, I think we can, I think we can conclude the Earth is a negatively charged body. It's inducing us to be positively charged. Yeah, that might be backward. Okay, I don't know exactly, but I mean that would be something to look into. Is, you know, what charges the Earth? I mean, the Earth is typically seen as a negative charge, but it depends. I mean, it's relative. What is our charge relative to the Earth? All right. Anyway, we are induced charge. Now, the more mass that we have, the more charge we can be induced with. So the more atoms that we've got, the more mass, you know, mass is related to how many electrons you have, how many protons you have, etc. So what that means is that the more mass we have, the more electrically charged we get, therefore the more force due to gravity we see. So I think that that shows, okay, that Coulomb's law equals Newton's gravity law, and that gravity is really a charge. Gravity is a charged, an, an induced charged attraction. Okay. Now, what are the implications of that? The implications of that, I don't know if you've heard of sonic levitation. Um, it seems like that if you vibrate something at the exact frequency of something, you know, if you vibrate something at a precise frequency that you can make it be light, you can make it be very light. And you know, that might just be because you are increasing the pressure of air below it or something. But what that also means is that 
Um, what this means is that if we were to change the charge of a body, we would see a change in the attraction with the Earth. So gravity is based on charge. So if we change the charge of something, we'll notice a difference in gravity. And you know what an interesting thing is, is that when people die, they've measured that people lose mass when they die. What is the difference between living and dying? Okay, you know, I'm a biologist too, so that helps me connect these dots. Um, the difference between living and dying is something called homeostasis. When you're alive, you're in a state of homeostasis. When you were dead, you were in a state of equilibrium. Homeostasis means that there's a charge differential. It means that you're keeping the inside of the cells a different charge in the outside of the cells and you use that differential in charge to um, bring in nutrients and expel waste from the cell. When you die, that charge differential goes away. The only thing different between you living and you dead is your body's charge. Now isn't that interesting that when you die, you're, you weigh less? That means that gravity is a charge, just like I'm saying. All right. There's another thing I want to talk about. I'm trying to remember what it was. Um, so anyway, if you can change the charge of a body, you can change the gravity. So that that is like anti-gravity technology right there. So, you know, it just goes to show, once you understand a problem, you're 99% of the way to solving it. Because once you understand what the issue is, solving it's easy. You know, if you know that there's gravity is a charge and you know how to beat gravity you just change charge so I'm gonna take a pause right now I'm gonna think about what it was that I was gonna say and I will be right back all right so I remember what I was gonna say and that is the earth has to be charged to create gravity now that's actually a pretty big deal that means that the earth has to be charged now things that are living are charged. I'm going to tell you that the earth is living. Okay? When the earth dies and loses its charge, it's not going to be able to induce charge on us. We are just going to float up off into space. Now, this is huge because this explains why planets lose their atmosphere. And that is the planet just dies over time you know once the earth stops spinning the earth is gonna die once a planet dies it loses its gravity how crazy is that how freaking crazy is that now the planet dies it loses its gravity the atmosphere just gets just oh, floats off into space that is why these dead planets don't have atmospheres and what's else crazy is that means that the Earth is alive. The Earth is a living creature. It's a living entity. And that it being alive attracts us to it. How crazy is that? Anyway, something to think about. Hopefully I'll, I'll come out with more uh, videos on this. So stay tuned. Nature Hacker, signing off.